This is continuous analog acquisition with fast looping using LabVIEW, the DAC MXVIs, and the NI-USB 6211. In just a moment, we'll get into LabVIEW and programming this, but first, I'd like to describe the hardware setup. This is the USB 6211. We're using the Measurement and Automation Explorer to generate a continuous sine wave, and we're just looping that back into the analog input channel 0 right here. This will be digitized. It'll go back into the computer, and we'll see it in LabVIEW. So let's go ahead and program this application. First thing I'll do is put a waveform graph down on the screen. I'm only going to do one thing here, which is tell the Y scale not to auto scale. Now we'll go back into the diagram. Here's our waveform icon right here. I'm going to go ahead and use the DAC MX VIs, and the first thing I'll do is create a virtual channel. There's two things I need to set here. One is a constant that's going to allow us to select the channel that we'll be acquiring on. So the input channel is analog input channel 0, and again, that's this channel right here in our setup. So we'll select that. The other thing I have to set here is what the input terminal configuration is. So we're going to tell it to be referenced single-ended, and that means that our analog input channel will use a common ground. So the next thing we need to do is set up the timing. We'll come in here, we'll auto-connect this, and I have to set up three things on the timing. So we're going to go ahead and select the rate. We'll create a constant. We're going to tell it to acquire it 1,000 samples per second. The next thing that we need to do is set the sample mode, create a constant here. If I leave this as finite, it will collect a given number of samples, and then it will finish automatically. If I set continuous, it will acquire continuously until I tell it to stop, and that's what we're going to choose. And then we'll do creating a constant on the number of samples per channel. And this allows NIDAC to determine how big the buffer needs to be for the data that it's going to acquire. Then we'll go ahead and start the task. So we'll set that in there. And then we get into our read functions. Now the read functions are going to go and read out of that buffer that's being continuously acquired into. And there's a couple things we have to set here. We wanted to acquire analog input on a single channel, but we want to change how many samples it's going to acquire. Single channel, we want multiple samples, and we'll have it give us a waveform. And what that means is it will give us our voltage data as well as the timing information. And that'll come out right here, and we'll put that in our waveform graph. The next thing we need to tell it is how many samples per channel it's actually going to read. So I'll create a constant. If I leave it as this minus one right here, it will take however many new data points it has and just give us those. But I want it to wait till it gets 1,000 points. Finally, we'll stop the task when we're finished with it. And then we'll just move this over here. And I'm going to put this all inside of a while loop so we can read over and over again as the data is continuously acquired. Now I have to tell it when to stop, so I create a control and I set it there. The other thing I'm going to do is create an indicator right here off this loop counter, and that will show us how fast this loop is running. So let's go to the front panel and run this. We see our waveform. It looks like it's locked there. And because it synchronized the output with the input, we don't see it changing too much. But it's changing. If you look very closely, you might be able to see it. And then down here, we see that our loop is updating once every second. Now I'd like that loop to update a lot faster, especially if I wanted to do control, and that's the next part that I'm going to show you. So I'll shut the loop down and end that execution, and we're going to add a simple step in the middle of this. I'm going to create some room, and if I hold down the key and I stretch this out, the control key, and I stretch it out, I can create room in a LabVIEW diagram. Then if I'm lucky, I can select those wires right there, and I have a little bit of room to put another function. But I'm going to select this function right here, the DACMX read property node. So we'll set it up above, and I'm going to just wire it in between these two VIs, the timing VI and the start VI. This one, and we'll wire it down. Now there's a couple things I'd like to set. This property called relative to, and a property called offset. I'm going to give myself just a little more room here, and I'm going to create a constant I'll add it in, and I have some choices. I can read relative to the first sample that we acquired, or I can read relative to a lot of other places, and I'm going to choose 
read it relative to the most recent sample that we've just acquired. Now what I'd like to do is set an offset, and I'm not going to wait for it to get more points. I'm going to go back and take the thousand points that it has most recently acquired. So I'll create a constant right here. I'll put it down, and I'm going to tell it to go backwards a thousand points. And since those data points are sitting in memory, it will not delay. It's just going to give those to me immediately. So if I clean this all up, everything looks good. Let's go to our front panel. We'll run it again. And now what happens is it starts acquiring data. And you can see that sine wave, and it's shifting along. So it's moving along nicely. And one thing I'd like you to notice is that our loop has already iterated this point 100,000 times. So this is running much faster than our one sample per second loop rate. So this shows how you can do your high speed acquisition. You can see it quickly in real time, but also you can have a fast running loop that you could do things like control or saving data or responding to things as it's running very quickly. This is how you would do continuous acquisition with non-delayed looping using LabVIEW, the NIUSB 6211, and the DAC MX VIs.